you want to join the party, just call 307-215-5171. Again, that's 307-215-5171. What's up, Michael? Oh, I'm just updating our Bitcoin wallet here. See if we got any more donations. Oh, yeah. See how much closer Stacking we are. Stacking mad being. Bitcoins, baby. <laughs> we're we're going to be the Donald Trump of Bitcoin, man. Yeah. Actually, actually we had <laughs> one point. Screw that guy. Who wants who wants to be the Donald Trump of anything? I want to be the uh, who's that libertarian billionaire that uh, Doug. I want to be the Doug Casey of Bitcoin, man. Okay, <laughs> there you go. That's more fiend appropriate. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll let that pass. Yeah. What's up, man? <laughs> Oh, not much, man. Just uh, hanging out, getting some DJ stuff ready, and uh, talking to you on The Fiends Live. So um, I'm trying an experiment here. People can write me on Facebook or Twitter or anywhere. Well, write it on Facebook. Um, I'm not leaving Facebook, by the way. I said I was going to, but I'm not going to. Yay. 46 people liked me saying that I was not leaving. Um, oh, Yeah, because, you know, Facebook's a lot more fun with me. But um, write me on Facebook and let me know if I'm cutting in and out at all, because I'm trying to experiment. I am... On another computer, I am sharing Fiends episodes on BitTorrent. I'm seeding, and I want to know if that mm. cuts into my pipe because I'm uploading. Yeah. If it, you know. <laughs> Michael's seedy pipe. We want to make sure that it's nice and <clears throat> clean. And we have, um, we you, have a you new sound s- fine to me. Yeah, I don't. I don't hear yeah. any dropouts. Well, yeah, but we're connected peer to peer. Who knows what's going yep. out over the pipe? So let me know if the mm. pipe p- p- pipes. Or, uh, yeah, so if people want to get on the golden floppy disk of redemption, there's several ways to do that. That's basically the list of people that we're going to spare when we are the libertarian emperors of the world and we're sending all, <laughs> we're sending all the status off to libertarian re-education camps. You just but, um, had to one-up Adam Kokesh, didn't you? We're not just going to be the liberty presidents. We're, we're the know. anarchist emperors. Yes, of the world. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have the, the, world. the golden floppy disk of redemption is the people who will be spared from uh, being sent off to those, <laughs> those camps. By force, <laughs> libertary liberty force. Yeah, I'm I'm Adam Kokesh. I'm I'm I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. I want to rule okay. with anarchy. Uh, so if yeah. you want to be on the golden floppy disk to redemption, <clears throat> you can either donate money or you can uh, seed. And if you want to seed, you want to torrent, you want to take place in this global drone proof empire to, that would keep us going after you know CISPA or whatever comes after it takes our our servers and our website uh go to the website now and go to fiend uh torrent club it's a link at the top it tells you how to do it you leave your computer on overnight for a few weeks or months and you help out and uh there's also a twitter feed there'll be an ad coming up today for that it's uh twitter.com slash fiend torrents that's where we update when the new episodes come out Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And give people another pitch as to why they should do it. I mean, why is it important to have torrents of all the Fiends episodes rather than have them in the, the drone poof bunker already at, at freedomfiends.cz? Why, well, why this additional protocol? That's good, too. But actually, uh, Vaslav, the guy who runs the drone proof bunker in Prague, the Prague Republic, is, uh, is also doing the torrenting. And he's also going to be in charge of our yeah. uh, Buttons EU, our, our European button company. So we got buttons coming out. Freedom Fiends buttons. I'm buttons. excited about that. Buttons. So the one thing that was missing. If you would ask me the one thing that's missing from Freedom Fiends, it's, it's buttons. You've read books, attended lectures, <laughs> and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint, blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's one thing missing. Buttons. Freedom Fiends will soon have buttons. We'll have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two dice designs of guns and weed the road freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It'll only be six dollars for four buttons, including shipping. And uh, that's that's the ad that I wrote for it. But uh, we don't have the buttons yet. Yes, that's some live advertising from Michael W. Dean. <laughs> Plus, I mean, chicks love buttons, so you know, hand them out as gifts to all your girls yeah. that wear backpacks yeah. with buttons on them. Yeah, and, and it's like and the cheapest. Up punk jeans it's the or, cheapest or whatever, whatever you kids are doing these days. It's the cheapest merch you can get. You know, they're like a buck twenty-five each, and like you know, a T-shirt's like fifteen bucks, and a calendar is like fifteen bucks, and you know, bumper stickers like four bucks. But buttons, man, buttons are cooler. Yeah. I want to bring back buttons. Buttons were when I was yeah. in punk rock. It was like you you could tour if you didn't have a record, but you and you could tour even if you didn't have T-shirts, but you had to have buttons to tour. You know. <laughs> yeah 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 it's, it's about the most low rent merch you can get <laughs> yep. what about uh stickers though i mean stickers are pretty cool too maybe we should think about doing doing stickers yeah i don't know stickers though too tend to end up on other people's property which isn't our fault because we're not doing it but it's like 
buttons end up on your body, so it's on your clothes, so it's your personal space, you know. So you own stickers, it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, like I don't I don't want someone putting stickers all over the window of some store and then the store owner contacting us and saying, "Why'd you do this?" you know. <laughs> I'm not saying we'll never have stickers. Yeah, but, okay. Okay. Yeah. Buttons for now. Buttons for all. Yep. And Just, uh, uh call and buy some buttons, y'all. Emberly Emberly McCullough is going to be doing the button uh uh what's the word called? Fulfillment. Yeah. Button. So when you when you order one, mm-hmm. she's going to be the one shipping them out for you. Good okay, agorist okay. chick. Sweet. Kudos to her. I get. I think that gets her on the golden floppy disk oh, redemption, yeah. doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, even better. She's going to be like in charge of, of hurting the other people off to the camps. <laughs> <laughs> She'd hate that. Yeah, she would. So She's we had a really... Back out, man. We had a really... Things like that. Just back, just back out of that like a crow dad. <laughs> just, just walk away. <laughs> so okay. we had horrible sync problems on last week's cast until we fixed it and about 60 people oh. downloaded it when it was wrong we'll never make that effect again i think it was we got a government infected us with a stut next virus that instead of being aimed at uranium centrifuges it only affected audio editing software <laughs> yeah because we both were having problems and so it was like horrible um, the common thread, I guess, can we say that it was it was RetroShare? I don't know yeah. if that's what actually caused yeah. it, but we we both downloaded RetroShare. We noticed that um, our hard drives were like open to the network, so we had yeah. to plug that hole. But but then even after, like, it was giving us both problems. Like for me, it was the program would keep recording, but it would record just gobbledygook and mix my words together. Worms. So, you know, that. I figured out what it is when we yeah. say worms. It's us calling the state insignificant worms. Worms. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you think yeah. the state is insignificant worms? Yes, Why? I do. I do. I do. Uh, they're just worms, man. Okay. Friggin' worms. I'm going to try not to cuss. <laughs> so I think we need to start a serious okay. national. I think we need to start a serious national conversation about taking guns off the streets if cops are the ones holding those guns. Yes, yes. Or, you know, that's the first step. I guess, ideally, the final step, the final solution would be taking the cops off the streets. Yeah, but for but, now, uh, I think... I, I'm I'd guessing be, you're... I'd be happy with limiting cops what was the to... Thing? I'd be happy with limiting cops, t- for now, to single-shot black powder muzzle loaders. <laughs> or blunderbusses. <laughs> yeah, this is a response to that New York City shooting, man. Like, some guy went to shoot his boss on the street and shot him and then like you know some construction worker well he didn't even call 911 there's a cop on every corner in Manhattan so he just ran up the street and got eight yeah. of them and they came down they started shooting into the crowd to get the guy with the gun and <clears throat> they shot him but they also shot nine innocent bystanders and killed one and eight yeah, were wounded nine people that's the gang that can't shoot and, straight and, man Totally. Yeah, and I think it's been confirmed now, hasn't it? I mean, the the New York Times had a write up on it, basically blaming the cops for all this. The New York Times of all places. Yeah, and Bloomberg. And, uh, they had and, witnesses who had been shot by the cops, saying, "Yeah, the yeah. cops just came around the corner and started shooting, and yeah. I got shot." And Fox News even like took him to task for it. And Fox News is usually, you know, I mean, they're two running running conversations are basically god bless the troops and you know the the nypd are the heroes right next to the troops you know yeah 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 Yeah. huh so yeah that's a nice black eye on on the state and on cops and (laughs) how do you think has michael bloomberg responded to this i heard he went and visited one of the guys that was shot by the cops oh yeah he said i want to praise the heroism of the police and we need to talk more about a serious national conversation about taking guns off the streets (laughs) i see i see so he's he's still blaming the guy who just shot his boss i mean which is a horrible awful thing um and one of the articles i read it said he bought it legally Um, in florida so the guy had a legal gun in Flor- from Florida, shot a guy, but the cops, it seems like, did did worse. Not only did they kill a guy, but they also injured eight other people. Um, yes. I guess we've got more on this and more fiends in general coming up after we pay some bills, yeah? Yes. Worms. Worms, 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 worms. 
Kiss the beans. You want to what? You're a little crunchy. Really, really, really want to say ah? You're you're a little crunchy when you yelled yo ah. there. But you don't need to turn down. Just mm. don't yell. Or you buy a compressor. I got a compressor. <laughs> Just don't yell. I yeah. have a compressor, which is why I. I sound need a compressor. So I, us- yeah. I usually compress and post, so. There I don't like no, to have a lot of physical no, boxes making no, my stuff No hotter. post, man. There's no post. You know, I was reading about... Uh, the I band. know, there's no post when it's live. <clears throat> I was reading about the band Kraftwerk the other day, the 70s and 80s and 90s uh, German electronic band who actually influenced a lot of electronic music. And I was looking at their equipment and it had a pixel, picture of their uh, their sequencer. And I'm thinking about how, like, well, sequencer, that's like a little button in NEMA software. And the sequencer was like a box the size of like a car engine with a bunch of buttons on it. <laughs> yeah that'd be cool to have if you had the room and the money <laughs> for it but i can't have a lot of boxes man i i i do everything in a closet with no ventilation so come out of the need closet a, a bunch yeah. of hot boxes making everything hot come out of the closet nima then, then i couldn't podcast i couldn't i couldn't podcast so um yeah yeah, I, yeah. so metro pipe we just had yeah. an ad for them yeah. but um their their service is up if you have it but their website's down for a couple days so uh you can't sign up so you can either wait or you could go to Bola VPN, B O L E H VPN dot net, our other uh yeah, service. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. do that. I was uh I was downloading some stuff today and I had Peer Block on and my VPN and everything was just so quick and easy and I didn't have to worry about my IP throttling me or shutting down the internet like they do sometimes. So that's a good double whammy. If you're trying to torrent things, use um, Bola VPN and PeerBlock. Yeah. So uh, Indiegogo, yeah. one of those fundraising, cyber begging kind of companies, you know. Um, our friend that's yeah. doing the, the printable gun was using them as his, uh, you know, fundraising thing. And they they okay. shut him down and kept all his money. Are you serious? Because it was a gun thing. Wow. Yeah. I don't know who told them to do that, that's but insane. they did that. Yeah. What's the name again? India Gogo? Indie, like independent. India Gogo. Do not Indie, use them. Boycott them. India Gogo. Yeah. Wow. How, yeah. how much money did they take? I don't know. I know he I know did, he did had he, at least one donation of a thousand dollars, so it was well over a thousand dollars. Oh wow. I think it was a few thousand. <laughs> now I yep. hope at the very least they, you know, make those donations null or something and give them back to the people who I know. donated to them in the first place. I know. I mean because then those people can just donate directly to the printable gun guy, not go through yeah. something like Indie a go go. Yep. So uh, Bummer, I want to I want to thank Sean Duvali for setting up our fiend torrenting and uh, setting up Twitter dot com slash fiend torrents, which only has sixteen followers. But if they're all torrenting, that's huge. But we need more torrenters. We need more seeders. And you can you can help without spending yes. one dime, not even a post sixty four dime. <laughs> Or a pre sixty four dime, and you no know, dime at all. Here's it's something really about free. here's something about uh, about if you become a cedar on that. I'll tell you a little secret: is that Anarchy Gumbo podcasts are often recorded weeks before they're being released. So if you're torrenting them, you're going to get them weeks before they come out on the website. It's like you know special benefits for members of the Golden Floppy Disk of Redemption, right? So basically, they're able to get it as soon as you're finished editing it and put it up in the server, huh? Yeah, yeah. You know what's funny? You know how on like some of the recent casts I've been bragging about my books and like, you know, what a badass author I am and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, they're not, this isn't like uh-huh. self-published stuff. This is like, you know, you know, every Borders books in America carries my books. You know, I've said that. I didn't know this, but Border, <laughs> Borders books applied for bankruptcy in February 2011 and haven't been open since. There's not one in my yeah, town. Yeah, you didn't know so that, man? I didn't, I, yep. There's not one in my, well, why didn't you say anything when I said that then? I don't remember you saying borders. I thought if you did, I thought it was okay because you're just trying to say, "Hey, it's in bookstores." Yeah. Um, <laughs> nope. I don't know. Every everything that I've seen as far as brick and mortar bookstores is is Barnes and Noble and like little mom and pop shops like Bookworms, Bookworms. Uh, stuff like that. Worms. Yeah, but I I think even Barnes and Noble they can't last that long. I I think the only reason they're hanging on is because they've got the Nook and they're trying to get into <clears throat> e-publishing as well. Yeah, they'll they'll end up online only and they, they get bought out by Am- bought out by Amazon probably, and then the the Department of yeah. Justice will sue Amazon for some shit. Oops. 
Well, there, there's a friend I have on Facebook, and he always calls Best Buy the Amazon showroom because you go look at Best Buy, <laughs> and then you go back to Amazon get the better prices. Barnes and Noble's kind of the same thing, but there's a name know. for that. It's I, like whenever e- whenever I go to Barnes and Noble, I see the books. I'm like, do I really want to spend twenty five or thirty bucks on this book when I can get yeah. it on Amazon for like a third of the price? I know. I know, man. So, I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know, um, I know. anarchists and hurricanes. Oh my. <laughs> I saw this thing on CNN the other day. Yeah, they that's said a one-two that punch. It was a teaser for for something coming up after the commercial, and it said uh, the Republican National Convention is in danger of being shut down by hurricanes and anarchists. And uh, yeah. then I watched the piece, and it was like you know the hurricane was real, and it it may actually shut down the convention. But the anarchist thing was, I mean, basically they were saying you know anarchists are as destructive as hurricanes. That's what I took into it, and they were saying that. DHS had put out a, a a notice thing that like you know beware of anarchists because they showed up in <clears throat> at Occupy Oakland you know they said we don't have any credible specific threat but they showed up in Occupy Oakland and threatened to blow tried to blow up bridges and that was a false flag thing that was the the FBI found the one nut and said we need to build bombs and here's how you build them and then he went and bought some of the stuff to build them after the FBI guy told him how and then they arrested him. They don't care, man. It's a buzzword. Anarchist has become, you know, a buzzword like terrorist. All the terrorist activities are usually FBI agent provocateur type stuff. They still call them terrorists. And, yeah. and they never define the term anarchist. Like it's just, ooh, these scary people that will throw uh, eggs filled with acid at you during the RNC. Did that and happen? The story, the story I saw had like, no, but they were like, threat- they weren't threatening it, but they were like, this could be one of the possible things to fear. Not only that, but they had like uh, anarchist graffiti, you know, like all sensationalized, and it was like a picture of uh, of the V for Vendetta guy. Like yeah, and it's like rooftop bomb like, oh, throwing. This means the anarchists are out to get us. The last time actual anarchists threw a bomb in America was 1887. It was the Haymaker riot. You know, I mean, there were some people in the 60s oh, really? that did some bombing that were called anarchists, but they were actually Marxists. You know, they yeah, were they yeah. were trying to. I don't know. I, I feel like. I feel like the media, whenever there's violent protesters, that's their go-to word. Just because they want to discredit the thought of not having a government or having a society without rulers. They like to point to it and say, hey, see, see, for all you people who might... If you ever hear somebody say the word anarchist, run away and be scared and hide under the bed. Because they don't believe in government, so they must be violent. (laughs) <laughs> they don't they don't want to vote yeah, democrat yeah. or republican that's the, that's the bizarre world we live in <laughs> they don't want to vote democrat or republican so they must be violent you know oh did you hear about the yeah, yeah. What, what the rnc did like their first order of business was they they in, they cited some arcane part of their charter which they usually ignore when they when they when it suits them but um they they immediately passed a new thing making it so you have to have like you have to be you know on the ballot in seven states instead of four states before you can be a contender. Like basically, it's ah. the, the first thing. Yeah, the, the I first heard that. I, I thought it was, was like, like ten and five or something. Though. Yeah, okay, but it was like the anti Ron Paul rule. Like the first thing they did was they like we'll make sure he can't get it and no one else ever yeah. will be able to get a third party. That was their first order of business. Yeah. Oh, and they did worse than that. They they they're trying to keep that whole Ron Paul thing from even getting a peep out. Um, peep. But we'll have more for you peep. coming up after we pay some bills, yo. Peep. Peep. We're going to sell some stuff, man. I like selling stuff. Anarcho-capitalism. Want to search porn in private? Or maybe you just want to talk to your friends without some tech goon hired off a pizza box snooping through your private thoughts. MetroPipe VPN is a secure computing service operated by privacy-loving anarcho-capitalists. Accounts can be had for as little as $7.50 a month. They take Bitcoin, don't keep any logs, and hate nanny intrusions as much as you do. Get a 25% discount by going to metropipe.net slash fiends. That's metropipe.net slash fiends. You can subscribe to Freedom Fiends via the RSS link on the top right of any page. It's orange. Or you can subscribe via email at the subscribe by email link at the top of the right sidebar on any page. It's a little bit below the search field. You'll need to respond to a one-time confirmation email, but after that, you will only receive an email each time a new episode posts. The Freedom Fiends respect your privacy. We will not spam you and will not sell, rent, or share your email address. And you are free to unsubscribe at any time. 
Yeah, it's because I'm using the ribbon mic. We're that kind of show. We're the kind of show where we don't mind tuning it live and saying, hey, man, turn up, turn down, don't yell. Hey, man. Yeah. Okay. Won't yell. Don't yell, man. man. I like yelling. Don't yell. You'll sound like an angry anarchist and they might come get you. Uh, I'll use my inside voice. So, Brendan Robb. (laughs) Robb. Robb. You want to... Well... Well, I think I think we teased people with a little bit more RNC tyranny. If you're okay, still up, you got there. it. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm just they sick of those people. I'm sick of those insecure. people. But tell tell us briefly I am what too, Justin and I'm all like, you know, I, Well, I'm not trying to say that you know Ron Paul's the way to go and fix society through government or anything like that. But uh, it is important to see what the Republicans are. Well, doing he's a threat right now. It's interesting not to only, me that he's a threat to them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because um, not only did they do what you said and, and change on the fly the amount of states you have to have a plurality in before you can have your delegates on the floor, um, they also did something that, according to Justin Raimondo, not even the Communist Party of the Soviet Union required and is unheard of in even Red <laughs> China. Um, and the rule, the rule here was bef- an hour before the delegates vote, they must write down who they intend to vote for. <laughs> Security. So like, um, Security. Okay, let's, let's we have a Ron yeah. Paul supporter. Security. Ex- yeah. Exactly. I mean, how can that make any sense to anybody? And how is that democracy in any sense? Voting for know? Romney. Yeah. How is that democracy? How is that better? I'm not saying Obama or Romney, either one of them is better, but there are people who think that we're going to go down the road to this horrible dictatorship with if Obama gets reelected. Well, we're going to go down that same road no matter uh, what. Well, and, and a lot of there's a lot of people who think that. If, you know, Obama's going to save us from the Christian Sharia that will go, you know, Christian Sharia and uh, tyranny that Romney would institute. They're both horrible people. And, hmm. you know, we're not voters, but we like Ron Paul a lot. You know, I mean, put it this way. I'd, I'd, I'd go out of my way to go hear Ron Paul talk for an hour. I would do almost anything to have to sit and listen to Romney or, or, or Reagan. I mean, uh. Obama talk for an hour. Reagan. <laughs> to, to, to get out of it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. yeah. I mean, wouldn't you go out of your way to hear Ron Paul talk, even though you're not a voter? You have gone out of your way uh, to hear yeah, Ron Paul although talk. Yeah, although I have. I, I saw him well, speak you went, at the you University went three of Texas. Hours, was, you, went, you went three hours out of your way to get a burger yesterday. Would you go that far to hear Ron Paul talk? <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope Ron uh, Paul would mean more I to you know. than an In-N-Out burger. Maybe not, because I didn't. I didn't go see him when he visited Eastern Washington. <laughs> I was at work. I was like, I got to make my money. I don't have to worry about this wrong. Well, Paul guy. it's no, also kind of like I, I do. I, I been, think Paul, but I'm really waiting for after the election when he can finally come out of the anarchist closet and say, "Hey, the government's BS," and these are my experiences throughout being in the government to prove that government is BS. And, and when we give we, we give him a job, vote, we give vote. him a job with Freedom Fiends and pay yeah. him Bitcoin. A real, yeah, a real job making real. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, yeah, yeah. He can be in charge of vetting the list of who goes to the libertarian reindoctrination camps by force. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> to that. All right. So we need to we need a caller. Call in. And I got stuff stop to us talk from about. The insanity. Give it's, out the number, but what's the number? I'm gonna give out the number. Give it's, out the it's number. Three zero seven two one five five one seven one. Three zero seven two one five. Five one seven one. Call into the fiends, yeah. Yeah, uh, I had my so, my Skype phone turned down, so people may have been calling the whole time, but I fixed that. Ah, uh, okay, okay, that's a good fix. Yeah. Did you see um, that Texas judge saying that if <laughs> Romney doesn't? Well, I guess that's that's the counterpoint. But he was saying if Obama gets reelected, that uh, we could have things like civil war. And he's they're saying this on like a local TV affiliate in an interview where the beginning he was pitching raising taxes by like one point. Well, yeah, he cents. said he like, needed more. more ta- he so needed I can more... protect you from the Obama yeah. and the UN. <laughs> yeah, he needs money to fight the civil war. Like, like if there were a civil war. Texans wouldn't be uniquely ready to fiend phone, fight it fiend phone on their own. Fiend phone, fiend yeah, phone. Yeah, it hello, sounds like fiend. We got a fiend phone. We got there. a fiend. Who's this? They hung up. That's weird. They hung up. Oh. Hmm. It was, it was Romney. Secret service. It was Romney. Yep. <laughs> it was yeah, Romney. It was. Yeah. It was. It was Secret Service just making sure I'm at this physical location before they drone me. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I was thinking, uh, it's Romney coming to kill my dog. But uh, <laughs> since Ob- Obama's, you know, because people people make a big ado about Romney uh, putting his dog up on the roof and driving with him while he was like wet or something, yeah, for hours in the cold. But uh, Which Obama's ain't cool. actually ain't responsible cool. for killing ain't a lot cool, of dogs. But Obama's actually killed people's dogs. Yeah, yeah, because he he's in charge of the Fed goons, and they come in and shoot people's dogs and stuff like that when they're well, on drug rates. I also imagine so. that whenever people's homes are droned. What was that thump? Did you get droned? No, no, I was okay. making a raspberry. Like a Oh, I thought you went well, that's a I thought you got droned. I mean I figured that's how a ri- <laughs> I, I, I figured you. that's how a ribbon mic would sound as it's being destroyed. <laughs> so Maybe, uh, maybe. Somebody should test that, but not on me. Yeah. Well, you know, when they drone wedding parties, I'm sure there's a dog or a cat nearby. It's someone's yeah. home or you know, there's people. There's where there's people, there's pets. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's worse that Obama's killed a lot of people as well. So, <laughs> but um, I guess that's just for all the liberals out there who are saying, "Oh, Romney is not good on dogs." Well, Obama's <laughs> not good on life in general. He <laughs> likes to kill people. Yeah, and you know that Brendan Robb guy, the Marine who got secreted away to a mental institution. Allegedly, there's a judge who said he's to be released but that was three days ago and i don't know that he's released yet but uh, if anyone knows any better call in the number is 307 what is it it's uh, 307-215-5171 yeah and i was thinking like you know the, the kind of stuff that he got in trouble for saying on his facebook like eh, it's time for another revolution i mean in wyoming politicians run and win saying things like that yeah, well, I mean, this Texas judge was on local TV affiliate in Lubbock or somewhere near the Panhandle, and he was saying this. You know, he's a public official saying, you know, Obama's going to call in the UN troops, and I'm going to stand in front of their armed personnel carrier and fight back and not let him into my town. Um, mm-hmm. How come the Secret Service isn't knocking down his door? I know. I guess because he's calling for more taxes. Yeah. You know, I was wondering if, like, what if the arrests of these patriot types isn't intended for a chilling effect? but rather to shake the trees and see who says what about it on the internet. and uh, like, Kind of like a test run, like a dry run kind of thing? Like what no, would like happen? To, to get more names was- for the list. You know, uh, Kyle Bennett said, yeah, traffic analysis. It's a tried and true method. There's something to that. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Although it seems like they could do that simpler than getting egg on their face like this. Because from what I understand, I mean, there, there hasn't been anybody... They don't care if they have egg on their face. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess I guess that's true. But they are lazy, so, <laughs> I mean, they had to get up off their asses. Maybe, I don't know, maybe the Secret Service guys were bored that day. Yeah. They, they just had that, that tyranny lust that they get. You know, he was, uh, one of the things that Brandon Robb said, I think this is the thing. I don't think it was the, I'm going to start chopping off heads, quoting the hip-hop line. I think it was the thing that, that that really got action taken against him was he said that he said the Bush family has a secret castle in Colorado where they have sex with children. <laughs> I think that's what did it, man. Did he, did he have a link to that? I'd like to look into that. No. <laughs> How many voters does it take to change the light bulb? How many? None. Voting can't change a thing. <laughs> or I like that. That could, be, a, that could be a T-shirt. Or there's too, yeah, too long to be a button. But, but there's and then there's another ending to that. It's uh, how many voters does it take to change a light bulb? None. They just sit in the dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's our job to turn on the light for them. Yeah, I really think that was the Secret Service calling man because someone called us and hung up. Maybe it was the wrong number. You know, <laughs> I mean, they were trying to call well, their their aunt Jenny, and someone said, "All right, fiend, what do you want? Who are you?" I'm sorry. <laughs> Click. It's also a crazy ex kind of thing, so maybe it's some scorned woman trying to call us. Well, um, I, I never mean, had. We this. have had a pattern of having more women call us, so yeah, maybe we're getting the the bad end of that. <clears throat> well, there are scorned women in my past, or women in my past that don't like me, but uh, I don't know. Maybe it was one of them. I think they would call up and yell at me on the on the air, though. Okay. Well, if you called and and hung up, call back. Unless you're the Secret Service, then leave us alone. Leave uh, us alone. But if you're not, we'll hopefully hear from you on the other end after we're done selling some stuff. Yeah. Well. 
Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. Should decisions on what you put in your body be left up to people whose very job depends on keeping certain plants illegal? Or do you believe in freedom of ingestion? The Genome Project is a cannabis science community founded by a leading DNA scientist. We fight ignorance with information. We don't have all of the answers, but we put all of our proceeds into finding them. If this requires sequencing the genomes of a forbidden plant, we've done it. If it requires leaving the country for the free pursuit of science, we've done that as well. The Genome Project is an ongoing crowdsourced experiment in free pursuit of the truth on cannabinoid sciences. Join us and participate in studying Mary Jane's genome. Get the app by searching Jane-Ohm on iTunes. The app is only $1.99 and all proceeds go to furthering and disseminating scientific truth. You must be 17 or older to download the app. Search Genome on iTunes. That's J-A-N-E dash O-M-E. Uh, there's one of the new songs. Yeah. So if, you're, if yeah, you want to check that cool. out. You know, we never finished saying that if you downloaded last week's episode and it was like everything was out of sync and we were talking over each other, just delete it and go to the website and re-download. We re-edited it and actually renamed it. It's now called in, in Soviet Union, Soviet Russia, Drug Consumes You. That's the fixed version of that. Yes, yeah. yes. It was fixed on Stitcher. So it was. Oh, it was what? Okay. It was what on Stitcher? Fixed. He, he said. Not? He said it was fixed. Fixed was on fixed. Stitcher. Ah, good. Yeah. Yeah. They probably check the RSS feed every hour or so. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so, anything on your mind, Worms. Will? Any question? Any other questions you have? Um, I don't know. Uh, not really. Not specifically, I suppose. Which I probably should have prepared a little bit better. Have um, you seen our, Have you seen our movie Guns and Weed: The Road to Freedom? I've I've watched some clips of it. I've watched maybe the first I don't know, is there twelve clips 16, on YouTube? 16, I've maybe watched yeah. four of those. There's some point where it's kind of uh I don't know, it's preaching to the choir. You know, I don't know how many <laughs> weed documentaries I've watched and, and all that. So <laughs> I, how, I I enjoy it though. I mean, but how many guns and weed documentaries have you seen? I don't I you know what there's probably zero. That would probably be the first one. <laughs> yeah, that was so actually I do need to finish it. One one of the comments on YouTube was this is the best guns and weed documentary I've seen. LOL. <laughs> Appropriately named, yes. Yep. Are you a gun guy, Will? Uh, no, I'm not. I mean, I I own a rifle, um, but I'm not a big hobbyist or anything. You know? Well, if you own a rifle, you're a gun guy, oh. I think. Okay, close enough, I suppose. I'd like to. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually going to be moving here the next three weeks to the. Uh, Libertarian Paradise of Chicago. Ugh. Ooh. So, Why? Why? <laughs> well, um, I think that has... I live in a small town, and uh, I think that's kind of... I mean, I have to have the freedom to live, and, and a big city offers amenities that a small town obviously yeah. does not. So I would be free to enjoy you know, being able to go to concerts and events and museums and such. That I can't, you know, so I'm not basing it because I like the politics of Chicago. I'm just basing it because I think it'll be culturally, um, you know. I have a suggestion. I have a suggestion. A fun, is fun time. Move to Cheyenne, sure. Wyoming, which is a really much freer place than Chicago, especially for guns and in other yeah. ways. And it's driving, it's like, you know, hour and a half drive from Denver. And Denver is a pretty major metropolitan area. Right, yep. Yeah. Well, I don't know that this will be a long term move. Um, I'm 25, so I could see myself being there a few years, and then, uh, you know, I've considered, I've looked at, uh, you know, Wyoming and New Hampshire, and maybe that's the next step. If you're 25, you probably like New Hampshire better. Wyoming is more, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I guess if if you can tolerate, you know, living in Chicago and you want to be there for cultural stuff, then by all means. But I think it'll be a good experience, and, and maybe you do find that, hey... There's just way too much state here, and I want to leave, but maybe not. I mean, 
Call us you after you know until after you live there. Call us after you live there for a while and uh, give us a follow up. Yeah, yeah. I'll have, to, I'll have to report. Yeah, yeah. But Chicago <laughs> isn't Chicago like near the border of some other state that's a lot freer? Uh, not really. Okay, Indiana so. I mean, and uh, Wisconsin. Toledo so. isn't Toledo pretty close? Well, that's in Ohio. That's not any freer. Yeah, that's a ways. Yeah. So yeah, I, th- no, I think the whole Midwest area is free. pretty unfree. Yeah. So speaking yeah. of freedom yeah. uh, and and California hippie Marxist freedom, Nima, let's let's talk with our guest here about this free speech speech monument, which I'll link in the notes in Berkeley. Do you want to read this short description of it? Yeah, yeah. It's called the Free Speech Monument. Um, It looks like it was big from 1991 to 1994, so it's pretty old. Um, It was the winner of a national public art competition to commemorate the free speech movement at UC Berkeley. Um, And basically the idea is within this, I guess, six-inch diameter piece, there are no laws that are applicable within the small space. So it's kind of like an autonomous zone, and people can, uh, I guess, can you write things on it, or is it just... You stand on it? I, I'm not really you sure. You stand on it and clear. smoke a joint while firing a gun. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> I, and naked. You it naked. Six inches? Yeah, it's six inches off ground. But the theory is that if you're not on the earth, you're not on the the laws of the land. So I'm thinking, like, what if we had lip bear in balloons, you know? <laughs> yeah, so it's a yeah, sky city. I, I I don't think we want to test the U.S. government's dominance of airspace, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they don't take too kindly to that. I'm, I'm pretty sure they would yeah. consider the airspace their jurisdiction. And balloons they probably couldn't. Balloons are easy yeah, to they shoot down. Us from there, though. Balloons are easy to shoot down. Yeah, they wouldn't need to. Yeah, It'd be yeah. pretty easy to shoot a balloon down. <laughs> you could do it with a pistol. So, <laughs> nice try, but um, hmm. I think we need something a little bit more probably, secure. Probably not work. Yeah. No. <laughs> but um, an, a nice honorable mention to the folks who came <laughs> up with this idea. Al- although, you know, it was a long time ago, so tyranny wasn't as, I guess, it, it might have been, well, it wasn't as bad, and it certainly wasn't as talked about. So I think it's more, our tyranny today's are more obvious nowadays, and so it's on people's minds a lot more. So maybe you know, they would up the game if they did it. I've decided that George Washington was the Ronald Reagan of his day because he was a tyrant who spoke, who who talked long, long and hard about freedom. Uh, there's a really great quote from George Washington that I like. That's absolutely true. The last official, the last official act of any government is the looting of the treasury. <laughs> he was just telling you his plans in case shit went sour. Yeah, <laughs> Nina, did you see that uh, that video of the president of that tax eater company that makes pre-crime software appealing to America not to cut budgets because we need them to fight the war on terror? I read about it, but I didn't see the actual video. I mean, how did this guy keep a straight face while he was asking for more of your money to tyrannize you? I don't know. I'm kind of afraid to link it somehow. <laughs> 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 yeah, since he's the president of the company. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Will, is is there any um I mean, yeah. where are you coming from? Are you are you a full anarchist now or are you a minarchist? I mean, how do you feel yeah, about this? Yeah, for you know, I kind of came through the traditional uh Ron Paul, you know, Mises Institute. We um, all did. We know, all found did. Molyneux, we that did. That type of road and I would yeah. say I'm fully I'm committed to the cause, I suppose. Um so yeah, there's definitely I yeah I'm in Iowa, so there's not a lot of people who uh, I suspect think like that. So I'm hoping <laughs> in Chicago, with that type of population, I can at least find some like-minded people. So yeah, well I hope so. I hope so. There's a lot of how weird- do you feel? There's a lot of weirdos ahead, in Chi- there's a lot of weirdos in Chicago, but uh, I imagine they're all Obama voters. But there's probably a little pocket of you know. Yeah, I think predominantly. Yeah, I saw there was a meetup group of market anarchists in Chicago, so that's a promising sign, I think. So it's probably put on by the we'll Secret see. Service <laughs> to find them. Yeah, you know, I don't know how a, things a are going elsewhere, but I know in in Austin, which is like people always call it the island of blue statism in the in the sea of red statism. Uh, I really haven't seen very right. many Obama stickers, you know, bumper stickers or signs, or very many Romney bumper stickers or signs. In fact, the only Romney I think, bumper I think sticker I saw excitement. was like. Go ahead. You know, I, I think people just, I don't think they're excited this year, either side, really. But, 
you know, people will still vote, but I don't know that they're as enthused either way for Mitt or... We, we got Ian calling Obama. in here. We got to take this call here, but call back any time, sure. man. All right, thanks. Th- thanks, Will. Right, hey, thanks for having me, guys. Bye. Right, bye. Hello, this is The Fiends. Who's this? Hey, Michael, how are you? Hi, who's this? Uh, Mike, I'll just, this is Jazz from Vancouver, British Columbia. I just came across your article on the website on Google, and it's kind of interesting. Uh, you, you take live callers on the radio? Yep, you're live right now. Am I live on the air? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. It's nice to be on the air. Uh, you guys are doing a pretty cool thing about uh, taking live callers on the air. I'm just curious to find out, have you have you adopted a new technology or are you still using the same technology that you posted on the internet? Uh, we'll, we'll keep answering. We're actually going into a break right now. So for the folks listening live. Hi. No, I'm let's, let's, let's do, do, it keep on, recording? Let's do it on recording. Yeah, we'll record it. We're, this, this will go on the archive. Um, which which article are you talking about? I'm not sure. I've done a few. Well, I'm looking at the, the home for all things, Michael, the WD. Okay. And this is how to take phone calls on a live internet or radio show. Yeah, we're still using that. We talk with, to, to each other with mumble, uh, and then we're using Skype. You're calling in on a phone number that goes to a Skype uh, to Skype, and we're using Skype. Okay, so I'm looking at some of the pictures the way you've uh, uh, taped the uh, headphone to the microphone and, and all the other phone jacks and, and the mixer board. So essentially, I, I was just calling to find out how's that service working for you? Well, the the Skype thing, the, the, the phone taped to the microphone is not how we're doing it. That's how we did it the first time. But um, it's, oh, wor- okay, so it's working you, well. You, Are you trying to sell us another service? No, I'm not. Actually, you know, I'm a, I'm a small <laughs> internet. I'm a small internet radio uh, station here in uh, in Vancouver, out of the basement, uh, and I'm just kind of curious to see uh, if there was any further development in the in the in the design or the setup that you have. I might be able to, you know, take some notes from you guys. No, it's working great. You know, I should actually take that picture of the microphone with the headset taped to it off because I think several people have been confused. You know, I was yeah. Just, uh, let me take that off while we're talking here. But nah, we we're doing exactly what it says on there, except for that part, and it's working great. Okay. Uh, anyway, just generally, how- it's live show. It's a call-in show, so you can call in at three zero seven two one five five one seven one. You can even call us to just ask us basic tech advice, like our last caller, right, Michael? Yeah, that was a very interesting <laughs> call, man. I thought that guy was like trying to sell us like. Would you like to change your long distance service? It was it was a guy, it's a cool guy. He was uh he read an article I wrote about how we do our streaming live show and take calls and he found the phone number on there and called in and thought it was my home phone number and didn't realize he was on the air live <laughs> until we told him. And uh it was pretty cool. We gave him some tech yeah. tips and you know, we're all about the news you can use here at Freedom Fiends. Yeah, he was stoked about it. He wasn't like, Oh, I don't want to be live on the air. Hang on, yeah. hang up. But at one point I said, uh, you know, he's like, well, are you happy? Are you still happy using that service or the, the, the technology you're using? And I was like, yeah. Are you calling to sell us a better technology? Because it kind of <laughs> felt like the question someone would ask if they were asking you to yeah. change your long distance phone call yeah. on the, you know, for your streaming show. And it, it wasn't a Liberty thing. Like his show was playing South Asian music, which I'm guessing he meant Indian music. Like yeah. Indian, dot Indian, not feather Indian. Yeah. Um, like do you remember to, his name? Because we, we can... Sh- we can <laughs> no, but we told him to listen, so he's probably listening okay. right now and mad at you. And he, if he wants to call back and yell at you live on the air, but you know, you're saying it was I was, love. And I, you're South I wasn't hating. You're 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 uh you're. I guess you're, you could call me Southeast Southwest Asian. Not yeah, you're, you're Persian, which has common yeah. bloodline with uh, India. Well, they're both Indo-European, so yes, yeah. close enough. I think they're actually both part of what's considered. Um, What's that word that Hitler stole and screwed up? Aryan. Aryan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah we're, Fiend we're phone. Fiend phone. Oh, he's calling back. No. Fiend it's, phone. It's Chandler. What's up, Chandler? Hey, man. What's up? Hey, what's up? Talk to us. Uh, kind of bummed. I went into town today and uh, I went past the local civic center and they were having a gun show. So I slammed on the brakes and drove into the parking lot, but there was only 15 minutes left. Oh, <laughs> so that's why you were bummed. You, you, got got a lot of you got a lot of background noise there, man. Are you in the shower? No. Okay. Let me see if it's you. Yeah, it's you. 
Do you want to call right, right, I, call, call right back? Hang up and call right back. I think it'll sound better. All right, man. All right. Okay. Thanks, Chandler. Boy, that did sound like he was in the shower, didn't it? Yeah, there was some hissing in the back, but maybe he's outside on a windy day. That could do it too. No, nah, it was it was something electronic. It was too. Uh, yeah. So anyway, we liked the phone call that we got from the guy that asked tech questions on the air, and we respect that. And you know, I mean, we're we're part of the Liberty community, but you know, I guess we're also part of the the streaming radio live show the, community. Yeah, the internet radio community. It's it's the fiend people, phone. It's the people fiend community. phone. Yeah, draw a Venn diagram. Fiend William. phone. Fiend. Draw fiend a Venn phone. diagram. Hey, what's up? God, you still start hey, like that, in the is shower, that man. Better? No. And no. I think it's tolerable, though. It's tolerable. Keep, t- keep, keep talking, Chandler. Keep, keep talking, talking, Chandler. What's up? Oh. So, uh, yeah. did you get a chance to check out that video I posted? Nah. I get so much. I mean, nah. I'm not being rude, but I literally get a hundred oh, yeah, e- hundred emails a day of people saying, yeah. check out this tyranny or redemption. And, you know, I have a chance to see about ten of them, maybe five of them. Yeah. What was it? Is, is, yeah, is this well? It, is this it, the delete Facebook video? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I, I just think it's video. interesting. Uh, I don't know, man. I have mixed feelings on the social networking thing. I well, think it does a lot of good, like what we're doing now. Yeah, it also lets the world into your bedroom, including the government. You know, and it's like, you know, actually, I can tell you why I didn't look at that one it was because I did a lot of soul searching last week and decided to delete Facebook. And for about four days, I was posting, hey, everybody, you know, you can follow my RSS feed or whatever, Twitter or whatever, but I'm not going to be on Facebook anymore. And it was not a reaction to the Brendan Rob thing. You know, it's like they got my number anyway. They know who I am anyway. Um, it was oh, yeah. it was more about distraction, you know, because I literally I spent a lot of time on Facebook and like I really got on there for one way communication. I got on there to like promote my shit. But first of all. You, you can't really promote your shit just posting it. You have to interact with people. But second of all, it's really fun to interact with people. And I end up spending way too much time on there. And it was kind of getting like a drug addiction. Like, you know, I wake up. It's the first thing I check. You know, I'm like, check five minutes later, two minutes later, you know. And, and I was like, and then I realized, like, it's a really useful tool. Like, the other day when I was, when I was trying to find somebody to do our fulfillment for buttons, you know, I could, it wouldn't work that way on Twitter. First of all, I have like 2,000 something followers on Facebook and like, 200 or 300 on Twitter and uh, but it also Twitter just doesn't really work that way for some reason for me so I realized right. I couldn't find the th- I couldn't do the things I need to do without Facebook so uh, I decided to stay on and it was like a major decision and then somebody sends me a thing that says why you should get off Facebook and I'm like I'm not gonna go through all that again <laughs> so right. I, I didn't click on it yeah I mean I uh, and I feel the same way I I have noticed that in the past, Facebook has become a real-time consumer, and that's not what bothers me so much as the fact that uh, online social networking in general, I think, has taken away from people's real interactions, and I think that's the problem. Well, you know, I don't have real interactions very much, so I don't care about that. And Facebook <laughs> Neither is the, do I. It's Facebook is the symptom. It's it's I'm the problem. You know, it's kind of like. If someone's trying to get off drugs and they live in the big city and they think, well, if I move to Iowa, I won't be able to find drugs and I'll be fine. And like, no, a drug addict can find drugs in Iowa. You know, you just go to the welfare right. office and talk to the first person you see out front and you can find drugs. <laughs> li- literally, that's how people find drugs in a new city. Um, oh, absolutely. But, uh, well, and, or, and I think that or the methadone another clinic. Thing, yeah. And I think another thing that played in my thinking with that is um, just the security. I've really been. You and a few others have, you know, really been pushing that. I have a friend who's been trying to beat it over my head for over a year to really study privacy, online privacy and and security and tech stuff. And I'm really starting to dig into it. And you got to be careful. You know, Facebook and, and Twitter and, and all the different social ner- networking sites, they're popping up left and right. There is a certain amount of a security risk there. And it's not just, oh, the government's going to get you. I mean, you know, you're exposing yourself to marketers, to predatory people, yeah. you know. And, well, I'm pretty good at blocking I mean, marketers and predatory people. I mean, I, I told you my ban list is 300 people on Facebook. Right. Um, but, yeah. you know, really the thing is it's a trade-off. Uh, simply, you know, it, where where privacy stands now, since it's not, like, included in 
major software like you know like email programs don't have it and uh, you have to download it and add it and people have to be, know how to use it it's not grandma's not going to use it unless it's grandma like mama liberty she uses it but uh, you know yeah. basically if you are if you are only doing secure communication you're going to be talking to like your six friends and that's it and you yeah. can't you can't promote stuff i mean the way the internet works literally the way it was designed is for openness and as soon as you and in openness you're exposed to everything and as soon as you try to put some blocks on the everything you greatly reduce the number of people you're talking to good and bad you know well one of well, the solutions the me and you had I talked about michael was having a browser that's dedicated just for stuff like facebook yeah. So you can use your VPN and use a different browser like Firefox and then only do your Facebook on Google Chrome or something like well, that. Well, I would only also say I Google would also Chrome. say you shouldn't use your VPN with Facebook because then that gives right. the central scrutinizer like a narrower band of like okay, somebody's doing something encrypted on this secure browser some the same IP address in Luxembourg is being used for this Facebook account, you know. Yeah, that's the mistake I made when I first started it out. I, I would actually go a step further. Too. Have two different um, computers. Exactly. I mean, you can get a cheap or build, like in my case. Um, you know, I go to the state surplus sales, and you can buy a computer for 35 bucks, and you don't need anything <laughs> special to surf the Internet. Well, I would, I would also say I would use the good computer, the fast computer, for the non-encrypted stuff like Facebook and, you know, editing your video and stuff like that. And the secure one right. wouldn't have to be as fast because a lot of stuff you do secure – is just text based you know I mean like yeah. IRC chat and uh, things like that you know you're talking on text and like any old computer will work fine for it yeah well did you hear what a lot of people in um, Egypt were doing during the revolution when they cut off internet a lot of the communications were coming through on blackberries and blackberry by well it's not by default but automatically has a built-in feature to encrypt communications and that's how a lot of people were planning events in uh, Egypt was uh, through encrypted Blackberry messages yeah so I mean it's a really good yeah. tool to use I remember I hearing know. that but who, who uses Blackberries these days though I well, mean everybody's got do. Windows you phones can, and you can probably you buy do? them cheap you can probably buy them cheap yeah. to use too you know because no one uses yeah, them yeah that's yeah, I, I do just a monthly paid service. I, I would, don't do I would, I think they'd be better than non-encryption, but I wouldn't trust encryption that goes through a major corporation either. No. Because they have to well, get back, to back to us. All right, we're out here. Hang on. All right. It's the Freedom Fiends live show. We've got Chandler St. Pierre on the line with us. And uh, what's up, Chandler? Just chilling and listening to you guys. Just what? <laughs> yep. You said you just, said just chilling, chilling and listening to us. Guys. Cool. I like that yeah. you listen to us, us guys because I think there's a lot of people who call in. I think you actually did. did we have a caller when you called in? No. Uh, there's people who call in while we have a caller on, and I think that's kind of strange. Are they not listening oh, to us sorry. or something? Maybe they think we have like a call screener or uh, a call catcher. And they're going to, oh, like, like LRN, uh, like a Free Talk yeah. Live. Exactly. Yeah, because you can call and get put on hold, and then you come on after the next caller. We got. Uh, Oh, Just we, like that. <laughs> well, we lost. We speak lost speak of the devil. I think oh, we lost having, Chandler. I think he's having network problems because, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to oh. turn this down because it's just pinging trying to come back on. I'm going to hang up here. So give out the number again here, Nima. Yeah, well, Chandler already knows it. Uh, Chandler, call us back if you'd like. Um, and for those other fiends out there or maybe people just listening to us and haven't heard of us before, give us a call. Introduce yourself. It's 307 215 Five one seven one. Again, that's three zero seven. Fiend phone. Five one seven one. Is that Chandler again? Fiend phone. Yeah. Fiend phone. All right, good, good. Chandler, are you there? What's up, yeah, Chandler? Very strange. My my VPN cut out and it disconnected. Uh, are you calling us through a VPN? Yeah, I had it on. I didn't even realize it, and I looked up and I was like, oh, is it maybe off? that's why is it's it lagging. Is it off now? It, yeah, it's off. Okay. okay. We're still having a lot of audio problems with you here today, but uh, talk loudly and clearly about something. Yeah. Well, he was, so, he was talking uh, to me about uh, data mining through Bitcoin when we were on the break. So um, what have you found out ooh. about that so far, Chandler? Actually, I haven't been able to find a lot. Um, I was listening to a, a show that a guy did, and he's um, quite versed in computer stuff. And he didn't come out and say it. He just said that I theorized that uh, uh, the whole initial, when Bitcoin started up and people were in, there was a program you could install on your computer and, and all this stuff and 
they, that hackers, whether they be white hat or black hat, might have been using that as a giant data mining operation. Kind of like, um, you know how uh, there's that SETI program yeah. that you can crunch yeah. data on your computer? Same idea, you know, using everyone's computers, kind of like how you uh, hackers use bots. So it was interesting, you know. I mean, I don't know either way. I've never used Bitcoin, so I'm not. Well, I'm using I'm using Bitcoin. Uh, I'm the one person here that's using Bitcoin, so I'll tell you what I know about it. Um, when someone makes a donation to you via Bitcoin, uh, it's anonymous to you. Like you can't, you don't know who made the donation, which is why, oftentimes, when people are selling something via Bitcoin, they'll say, you know, okay, if you're the person that buys this make the donation and then send me an email and tell me what time and date you made the donation and for how much or, or the payment because otherwise you have no right. way of knowing who made it. However, there is a public site where you can see all Bitcoin transactions made and if you know someone's Bitcoin address, which if they're taking public donations like we are, you can enter that in there and see what, what date and time what amounts were made to that address. So that could be used for Bitcoin mining in some ways. Like I imagine, uh, you know, like if you had a well, public not Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining, but, but data mining, using data mining, sorry. Bitcoin yeah, address. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I imagine, you know, it might be possible if you're not using encryption and stuff to figure out who's buying what on silk road, because you could see, uh, um, you know, on Silk Road, you could see what address the payments were made to. I think most people do it with, you know, like you have to contact them securely and get it. But I suppose, you know, a law enforcement agency could buy something from somebody and then they'd have the... And, and this wouldn't be a method for busting the seller. It'd be for busting the buyer. Um, you know, like if someone's using their public Bitcoin address, which is listed on a website somewhere as this, you know, this is so-and-so, and if you want to make donations, if they're using that same address, um, I think there'd be a way to figure out when payments were made to that on Bitcoin by knowing the user ID of, you know, the, the Bitcoin address the payments were being made to, and then look for amounts yeah, uh, that are the price of the drugs being sold uh, what time and date those were made, and you could do a whole lot of number crunching and possibly pick out of the pile, you know, this person bought something on Silk Road with this well, Bitcoin address. Can you have a private Bitcoin Absolutely. address or Absolutely. like a one-time use Bitcoin address, kind of like cell phones? Yeah, you can, once you have the Bitcoin, Bitcoin wallet, um, I think it gave me an option to immediately generate five Bitcoin addresses. I generated two, okay. one for the fiends and one for the dean. You know, one for the fiends and then one for anarchy gumbo right. and if i want to get you know take payment for something i'm doing with somebody work i'm doing or whatever okay okay i think either either way it's going to be good i mean i i think as the state starts to crack down i mean shit they're cracking down on modern sales and flea markets now so this alternative form of bartering is just going to rise you know until people have had enough and just say we're not going to comply with this ridiculousness anymore Right, but I think like with everything, it's smart to not put all your eggs in one basket. Like, don't go and put all uh -huh. your money into Bitcoin. Hey, you know, Chandler, have, I just have some physical gold at your house or whatever the case is. I just noticed your your video casting. Turn off your video, and it'll probably sound better because it's using some of your pipe. Yeah, talk Maybe a little bit go. now. We'll hear you. Is that better? Maybe. Uh, I don't know <laughs> it's just my computer. Oh, it's I think been you running. You know, it's interesting. I was telling you in the message uh, how. Things were kind of messed up after I installed RetroShare. Yeah. Yes, we yeah. experienced the same um, stuff. Well, I was when we were doing our show on BTR. Um, I used Skype and call into BTR, and, and I didn't pay much attention at first. Usually, it, it lists either like a one 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 Skype number or just a, a you know my username, and it was a two five five, which I guess is a Los Angeles area code. Two. So, uh, two five five. Well, that's what I looked up anyway, and it was in... And, and what? The, what about it? Well, I, think, I just thought I think that was weird. I think that's a foreign, uh, non-US area code. Okay, well, I'm, and I'm I, didn't it. Have, I didn't have my VPN on, because, you know, I figured I don't use that when I'm using Skype. So anyway, at the end of the show, you, uh, you end the episode, and you end your call, and I ended my call on Skype, and I clicked end the episode, and my computer crashed. 
And then well, when I rebooted and went back into BTR, it was still there. I, I left it on uh, for an hour and kept trying to end it. How it often wasn't. How often do you reboot your computer? Oh, I shut my computer off. This one every night. Yeah. Any Here's a tip news you can use. If you want your computer to run better, um, even if you're someone who leaves it on 24-7, like, you know, seating or whatever, reboot it at least once a day. Uh, yeah. with, with home computers that aren't built to be servers, if they run for weeks at a time or even days at a time, things get kludgy. So just rebooting it kind of clears clears all the the junk, clears the memory. Well, Ch dump. Chandler, ha have you purged all the retro uh, retro share paraphernalia from your system? Oh yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. And a couple of things. Uh, well, I'm Nima, kinda... Nima, there was something other than retro share. Retro share installed and you had to install that manually and so did i what was that called uh it was like a gnup or a gnpu key or something like that it was yeah. something that yeah Retro Share I said was necessary had a hard time finding that well it, it was it actually showed up in programs if you go to the in windows to well, the, i'm on like, a mac okay well in windows if you go to the like you know delete programs it's listed there yeah yep okay Worms. Well, uh, we are about to, right, have I'll to go to. I'll let you guys go so you can take some other calls. Right. Have a great night, guys. Thanks, Chandler. All right. Thanks, Bye. Chandler. Yeah. Worms. 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 So we'll take more calls after the break. Yeah. Just let it ride. I mean, after let we it go. Breathe. After we go sell some stuff. All right. So hard to undo that stuff, man. <laughs> it's the Freedom Fiends lives. Yep. So what's up, Michael? Worms. 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 Yes. We're gonna make a we're gonna make a Freedom Fiend button that just has worms on it. Um, it's not gonna be in the first batch, but uh, I'm gonna use the artwork of it today for the artwork on this episode. It's just three, four like smiling, happy worms drawing of them, <laughs> and it'll say Freedom Fiends with no URL, just like. And people will go, "What is that?" Oh, well, there's this yes. podcast where they say worms. Although, uh, somebody posted a graphic on my Facebook page uh, called A Worm's Worth. And one of the things that worms are good for is eating nematodes. So, uh, maybe you've got some secret beef with me, Michael. <laughs> well, maybe worms, worms to eat I like, the nematode. You know, what is, how many bitcoins, how many worms in a bitcoin? I mean, maybe worms could be the new economy. <laughs> how many worms in a bitcoin? <laughs> That'd be a good name for this episode. Yeah, how many yeah. worms in a bitcoin? I'm, yeah. That's almost... That's almost better than the really scary one in Soviet America. I, I, I kind of like it. Yeah. In How many Soviet worms in, a Amer Bitcoin? in Soviet America, social network follows you. Follows you. I'll just put it in the show notes of how many worms in a Bitcoin. <laughs> okay. Nice. <laughs> uh, speaking of um, evil things and scary things, there was um, a write up in the Wall Street Journal, an opinion piece about autonomous kill drones coming soon. Ugh. Yeah, drones that don't no Cheeto eaters required. Like you know, you don't have to have the, <laughs> the computer scientist geek back in Nevada eating Cheetos with his feet up, killing people. Like the drones will decide who to kill, which really like violates the three rules of robotics, as written by uh, who wrote that? Isaac Asimov. Yeah, yeah, robots Famed aren't science supposed fiction to harm writer. People. Although uh, the politicians will probably pitch it as, "Hey, we'll save all this taxpayer money because we won't have to buy as many Cheetos." And their and the <laughs> opponent and the guy that's doing that, his opponent will say, "My opponent is trying to kill American jobs." Yes, <laughs> not only the Cheeto eater drone killers, but also the Cheeto factory workers. Yes, oh, I did not have sex with that prostitute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, idiots. They don't understand how it works. Um, but yeah, I mean. How do you feel about that? Do you feel like that's a foregone conclusion that eventually there will be, even if it's not drones, but some form of state bot that will have well, the autonomy to kill people based on some algorithm? I mean, I'm thinking Terminator 2, you know? I mean, isn't that the plot well, of Terminator 2? They yeah, turn on the yeah. people. But, they turn uh, on the people, yeah. You know, I'll tell you what, uh, this this article really disturbed me. And it would it had been a day, that was the day I decided, right before that I decided I'm going to get off Facebook. Uh, part of it was like Facebook makes it too easy for people to tell me about the tyranny and it's kind of part of our job description to know about the tyranny but sometimes I get overwhelmed and I actually you know I'd been posting and talking about tyranny all morning and then someone sent me that John Johnson sent it to me and I was like oh my god I need a nap and I went and slept for like two hours after I heard that I was just like we're doomed man that's how I felt you took, you took, you took a tyranny nap I did yeah. I took a, a liberty well, nap 
it's funny because even the Wall Street Journal writer understands that, hey, this is kind of scary. Um, but the only solutions he offers are government solutions. He says, yeah. that first, we must establish an international legal treaty, framework for the use and development of combat yeah. robotics. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's like, no, that that won't work. Then the, the international framework will just be the final arbiters of your life. It's like, I, I don't care if, if my life is it, it's equally bad for my death to be decided by a robot than it is for it to be decided by, you know, U.N. officials. In yeah. Brussels and I, But whatever. I think it's even worse to have kill bots because I think there's more mistake possibility there, you know. Or or there's more tyranny possibility there, too, because uh, I really think that governments will argue this isn't murder because no human is pushing the button, uh, even though it's programmed by humans. Yep, yep. Yeah. And they could also say, oh, sorry, uh, it was a program error. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and kill somebody that they really wanted to kill, but they don't want to have the blood on their hands, so to speak. You know, maybe the New the Wall Street is this is in the Wall Street Journal, right? Yeah, yeah. An you know, piece if you the think Street about Journal. the average the average reader of the Wall Street Journal is probably a guy who makes a lot of his living from stock dividends from the companies that are going to be making these kill bots. Yeah, yeah, could be. So I'm surprised um, they even covered it. Maybe it was their well, their like way of nod nod wink wink saying, "Hey, your stock's going to go up, but we don't want to <laughs> we don't want to sound horrible." Maybe, maybe the. the there was some valid points in the article, though, um, namely, or, or one of them that comes to mind is the genie's out of the bottle now. I mean, yeah. there's no there's no going back on the drones. We're going to have drones, uh, even if the United States said, hey, we're done with drones, something like 50 other countries are developing drones from, from China to Pakistan, uh, you know, any country with technology that you can think of is has their kill bots rolling off the well, floor or I, design i could see a second amendment solution which would basically mean everybody gets to have their own kill drone <laughs> in yeah, self-defense yeah. you know well maybe maybe there's a an upcoming market for for drone defense initiatives like you could have i don't know anti-drone guns on top well, of your roof or there's something. there's actually uh a bill that um, I read about in the Casper paper because the our, our state senator, what's her name, or state congresswoman, there's one of Cynthia them. Cynthia Lummis. Yeah, she's she's backing this bill that'll prevent using drones for spying on Americans on American soil, which is mm. kind of interesting because uh, I think most Wyoming Republicans would be all for using them to kill brown people in the Middle East, but they don't want them, you know, because one thing they're going to be largely used for, and they already are, is for like the EPA has drones. Yeah. And they're going to, they're going to like fly over your ranch and go like, oh, you have too many cows for the amount of water you got on your land and we're yeah. going to take your ranch, you know? Yep, yep, and ranchers hate that, and I imagine in Wyoming there's probably a whole b bunch of people who are upset thinking the drones could spy on them and rat them out for having too many junk cars in their yard Yeah, all sorts of yeah. other nonsense. Yeah. Um, although, Lummis is no freedom fighter. I mean, no. I sat there and watched her at a, at a town hall praise Paul Ryan's plan and not even mention Ron Paul when or the Federal Reserve when it came to fixing the economy. She was just like, oh, Paul Ryan, Paul Ryan, Paul Ryan, like she was on his dick or something. Yeah, and I think she was actually I think she actually chimed in on the junk cars thing and was in favor of uh, regulating it, which is really none of her business. I mean, she is the state senator. She she shouldn't be chiming in on county of Natrona County issues, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not at I all. could be wrong about that, but I think she did. I think she mm. did. Hmm. Or, or yeah. one of this or one of the senators did she may have and it wouldn't surprise me because I bet a lot of the rookie reporters in Wyoming would think that she has some kind of say in it and ask her that question yeah although Lummis should have known better to say hey that's not my jurisdiction right. I, I don't have an opinion or yeah. no comment whatever the case is I don't know that she said that but I seem to remember that there was somebody it was either her or one of the state senators uh, what are their names NZ and there's uh yeah Enzi and oh, doctor, the doctor guy yeah John Barrasso right one of those three people chimed in on the spice issue too and was like we need to outlaw it I don't remember which uh, one it was uh, did did that get banned federally I thought or, or is it in the process of being banned federally I, th I, I thought I remember I reading something that they were putting it on schedule one bath salts and spice or yeah, synthetic marijuana I don't think it's passed federally yet but there's a lot of jurisdictions states and local jurisdictions that have made it a felony yeah yeah I've read about that but I also read something I don't know if it's already passed or if it's on the way but I think the feds are working on uh, or have already implemented uh, uh, putting 
bath salts and spice on schedule one. So getting caught with them would be the same as getting caught with pot or crap. Yeah, or and heroin. spice is uh is dangerous because you don't know what's in it and different people make it different ways and it's like it's a total unintended consequence thing like i talked to a state uh rep here who was like yeah i don't really want to add more laws against stupid shit but you know kids smoke this stuff and they end up in the hospital and the state has to pay for it and uh you know i'm thinking like well that's because pot's illegal if pot were legal no one would go buy the shittier chemical pot <laughs> yeah yeah not only the that shitty but, chemical uh, pot but why does the state pay for people's medical bills in the first place? Because they have to. Because we got to yeah. take care of the cattle. <laughs> exactly. You know, we got to keep those tax livestock healthy. Six slaves can't work. To. Six slaves can't pay taxes, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you just see the disingenuity of of every government program and every government solution to a problem because all the problems are caused by a government intervention in the first place. But but they never say, oh, well, we should repeal this law and that law when they're talking about fixes. All they can come up with is new laws to, to work around the edges. So screw the status, man. F that. Worms. And we'll be back with more vitriol towards the state coming up after we pay the bills. And on the Wednesday cast, we're just going to talk about the future and how great it is. We're going to spew yes. on Sunday and lip praise hair. and talk about lip hair on Wednesdays from now yes. on. It's a cathartic experience. Other end. So, this is our last segment, so uh, we'll kind of wrap it up and um, let y'all know what the deal is. What is the deal, Michael? I don't know. I don't know. I got don't a cat know. on my lap. He's standing on my lap, not sitting. It's kind of fun. Okay. Okay. It's voluntary, though. It's not like when the TSA is all up in your junk. Right. Did right, I tell you right. about when I got groped? No. Do yeah. tell. I did. I got groped. Um, yeah. I was hoping... I guess I knew that Austin's airport had the TSA, the new checkpoints, the newfangled things with their body scanners and their gropers. Um, that was actually worse than in Hawaii, but I was hoping that in Hawaii they didn't have them because they had such a small airport. But nope, they had them there too. They also, in, in the Hawaii one, they had a big, like, never forget September 11th thing, like right near the TSA checkpoints. So while, while you're getting groped, you sit there and look at all the propaganda and just think of how ridiculous it is. Um, and the guy who was touching my junk in Hawaii, he was like trying to like have good customer service. Like he was real friendly. He was like explaining everything he does. I guess this is all required. Uh, but he was real friendly. The guy in Austin was like seven foot tall, like 300 pounds and just like forcing his hands on me. And it was, Ew. It was qu quite disgusting. Um, although, you know, they didn't really cut my junk. It wasn't. It wasn't as horrible as some people, at least my experience, you know, I've heard of people getting, you know, fingers in their labias and stuff like that. Not that I have a labia, but um, that kind of invasiveness. Um, I didn't really experience that, but it was still super horrible, disconcerting, uncomfortable making. And they even like tried to make it seem like like we were the ones. It was our fault that we decided to opt out because most people just <laughs> like cattle go go through the new scanner. Um and they, they try to position the scanner as, hey, it's safe. You know, they have a little sign on it saying, hey, this is not an x-ray. This has been deemed to be safe. And it's well, just I like one the, sentence. The AMA has actually contradicted that. Yeah, yeah. Some people have contradicted it. And there's two types. There's like millimeter wave and then there's a different one. The ones that we had at the airports I went to were millimeter wave, um, which they say is safe. But um, I talked to another tech guy who who – uh, is a friend of mine and he was saying that he opts out not necessarily because of privacy but because of safety reasons uh, he was saying the millimeter wave stuff it actually vibrates uh, the particles inside of you and that's how it reads it reads the vibration um, so it, it basically makes makes your your atoms vibrate which <laughs> is not a very safe sounding thing yeah so I, I mean I didn't I didn't verify that I don't know exactly how the technology works and I really don't care if if you try to shoot different type of waves at me and you're the state, I'm going to try to opt out. I mean, I, I hate being touched by a person, but at least I know they're most likely not going to give me diseases or hurt my DNA and they're wearing gloves. So it's awful. <laughs> Both ways are awful, but I'd rather have. And plus, I feel like. I know people have done this with like the opt out day and stuff, but I feel like that's a good thing to, to make them have to work harder to show them that you don't consent. And anytime you can opt out, even if it's opting out for something that's equally horrible, uh, do the opt out. I want to give out the call in number here for our last segment. It's three zero seven two one five 
5171. That's 307 215 5171 here on the Freedom Fiends. And uh, yeah, so opting out. Yeah, didn't Whoopi Goldberg, was it Whoopi who called George a terrorist for telling people to opt out? George who? George, who does the IO festival. Ah, I know the George is talking about. Yeah. Did she say that? She called him a terrorist? Well, she's on The View, right? Whoopi? I don't, I don't watch The View, man. I know she was. I don't know if she still is. Yeah, it was when she was on. They were talking about... And there's these people who are telling people to opt out of the TSA pat-down. And, and I think that, that the, the government should be investigating whoever starts this phone. as terrorists. Fiend phone. Fiend right. phone. All right. Fiend phone. Fiend phone. Hello, Fiend. Who is this? Hey, Michael. This is Sean. Sean DeValley. Hey, Sean. Oh, Thank, what's up, Sean? For, it's our BitTorrent guy. What's up, Sean? Hey, how you He's doing? A super He's a super fiend. I'm doing good, man. He's how on the you? golden floppy disk of redemption. Yeah, <laughs> he's near the top of the list there. Yeah. What's up? Hey, I'm just calling to let you know I uh, just signed up for uh, Bolo VPM a few hours ago. Oh, why? Because you couldn't get on MetroPipe? Yeah, I couldn't get on MetroPipe. I signed up for a month. I'll use that for a month. I'll try MetroPipe for a yeah. month after that. MetroPipe's good too, man, and uh, they're they're friends of ours. So, yeah, let us know. Are you using it right now? Um, yeah. Okay. I don't see any difference in speed at all. Yeah, a good. good v- I'm, I'm a really good, happy. A good VPN doesn't give you a lot of difference in speed, but. Uh, yeah. You know, it doesn't completely protect you. I mean, like, if you're logged into Google and doing Google searches, Google's still going to know what your username is searching kind of thing. And there's some, some other pre- pre- precautions you should take, but it's a well, lot better one, than going naked out on the Internet, having a VPN. Well, one thing about uh, Bola, when I signed up for my registration, it sent me an email verifying it with my username and password in it. I ah, thought that was kind of strange. Yeah, that is kind of strange. Like, naked, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I'm I'm really happy with it. So I'm thanking you for the recommendation. Did you use the fiends code? Fiends code. Yes, I did. Fiends code. Fiends code. <laughs> so you asked us for the the wave file for the freedom the fiend phone thing, and I was like, you don't want to use that because then you'll be confused and you're like, I know the difference, and you just said you'd put it on your phone for when I called you. Did you install it? Yeah, it's on my cell phone. Okay, <laughs> I'll call you after the show so you can test it out. When yeah, it rings cool. in public and people ask you what the hell your ringtone is, what do you tell them? Um, it hasn't rung in public yet. Because like so. you okay. only have you only have it when I call, right? It's not your main ring. Yeah, yeah. Only, it's only for oh, you. Okay. I think you should make it. They already think I'm people at work already think I'm crazy anyway. I have the headphones <laughs> in at work and I walk around going worms, worms, <laughs> <laughs> nice. worms. Nice. What do you do what, for a living? Can we ask? I'm an electrician. Ah, I work do construction. Ah, cool. Well, I imagine there's a lot of people who work construction that are fairly liberty-minded. I- am I talking out of my ass there, or what do your nah, colleagues feel a, about stuff like that? There's a very small amount of us. Most of them are really statist. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Why do you think really, that is? They're really hardcore, you know, Republicans. Got to get that black guy out of office. Ew. <laughs> ah, but I'm ah. not racist. <laughs> yeah, they say right, that. Right. Yeah, yeah they yeah. Well, I I'd always figured they were more more like union guys, like electricians 104 or whatever. Are are you in a union or do you do you deal with union guys or is there not a lot of union electricians where you're at? No, I'm non-union, but um Okay. I don't know, I thought union guys were more democrat. Generally yeah, they are. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. Well, because really like the unions came out of the wobbly movement, which was literally a communist movement around the turn of the century. I mean, anarcho-syndicalists have something in common with what the unions came out of in America. Yeah. yeah. I was in the union years ago. I, I didn't care for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet not. Did it care for you? Uh, not really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did they basically just take your money and say that they were fighting for your your interests? Yeah. I do want to say I, that Met- I, I want to interject before we get cut off here in a minute. MetroPipe will be back up today or tomorrow. The service is up. If you already signed up for it, you still have the service. I used it today, but the website, they're moving servers. So uh, MetroPipe should be up in a day or two. Yeah, I originally planned on trying MetroPipe first, but because they're down, I, I can't sign up. So I feel I'll try Vola, Vola for a month, and then yep. I'll try Metro for a month. Yep. And then you could write a review of them for the fiends. Yeah, I'm yeah, a... 
I'm working on a new service that I'm uh, planning, a secret service. It's a secret service I'm planning with <laughs> okay. one of the guys from, uh, from MetroPipe. And I won't say what it is then. From MetroPipe. No, just that it's going to help artists share their material better. But it's yeah, a secret. Yeah, no, that's cool. I'm looking forward to that if it is what I think it is. Yeah. So go back to uh, unions, please. What you got on unions? Yeah, unions. Um, I know. I know they're not happy with my company right now because of the job I'm on. We stole from the union. Whoa. <laughs> Good job. That's not really stealing, though. The unions they yeah, use, but it's not. You just gave a better price, I'm imagining, right? Yeah, I don't understand. I guess they started the job, and we come in and took it out from underneath them. So we're trying to figure out what they did before we got there. <laughs> they, they, what they, they screwed up? They didn't leave notes like a computer programmer would. No, they didn't leave notes. They didn't leave their prints, nothing. Of course not. <laughs> they don't want to help the competition. No, not at all. I mean, Such really. I mean, that's that's one thing that programmers do is put in notations that you know in the in the programming. That's basically yeah. for the next programmer that has to work on that program, and that's yeah. They they, they a show good way their to work, do it. like yeah, they show, like elementary yeah. school math. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, or you know, not to that extent, but uh, you know, in code there will be something that's in parentheses. That's like I forget if it's called a node or a site or what it is, but it's you know, it's it's a note for the next person that has to work on that set of code. And that's a yeah. good thing. It's a good thing. It's open source. Unions are not open source. They're the opposite. No. <laughs> no, they're not. All right. All right, Anything, guys. Any... Well, I guess you guys got to wrap it up. Yep, wrap it up, yep, B. We'll wrap I'll it up. call you a few minutes after just to test your ringtone. All right. Sounds cool. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Worms. 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 Later. All right. Worms. DJ Another said, lively worms. episode of Fiends Live. Plenty of yeah. worms to go around. <laughs> infecting oh. all of you. Worm-based economy. That's what we're working it's towards. A, it's a worm-based economy. Yes. How many worms that's in a Bitcoin? Dream. How many worms in a Bitcoin, Nima? Twelve. It'd be, it'd be a lot. No, because they're a <laughs> no dollar. One. It's twelve bucks in it. Yeah. How many worms for twelve bucks for a dollar? Uh, I don't know, man. I haven't went fishing in a long time. 